What is up campers? We're out here at Pancake Bay and we want to take you through this park and show you as much of its beauty as we can. So stick around. Right now I'm down at the amphitheater and uh, this place is really big, it's really cool. Actually this is the best one I've seen this summer so far, 2021, other than Grundy. Um, shameless self promotion, I have a video on Grundy as well. But let's check this out, I'll show you what I mean. I would like to point out that they do have a discovery program here at Pancake Bay. Uh, if I was you, I would go ahead, look up any events that's going on before you come because during July and August they do run programs here, but right now it's kind of hit and miss because of the COVID just clearing. So check on the website and see if there are any events happening when you're going to be here. I'm down at the pavilion in the day use section. This thing is actually pretty big and there's a fair bit of tables here for everyone to use. So if you are just coming for the day, check with the park to make sure that you can get your hands on this pavilion. There's a lot of reverb in there. Sorry about the audio. But it is a nice big pavilion. I'm out at the group campsites and uh, they take 15 to 40 people depending and they vary in size so just look up each site I believe there's pictures online that you can find this is site 502 I believe you get a nice big fire pit for everyone plus a little grate so you can cook on it and I believe that's supposed to be a flat top Group site 505 is the group site I would go to. The fire pit is a little smaller, but right across the street, you have your own private beach. One kilometer south of Pancake Bay is this general store, pet exercise area. They got a bunch of knickknacks. I was just in there, I'm going to show you that footage now of everything that you can get in that store. Let me tell you, there's three stores. The first one is a general store and you can buy just about anything there. Uh, they have anything from trailer, hitch balls, to sewage pumps, to or sewage hoses, knickknacks, fishing gear, uh, all kinds of canned goods, hygiene products just about anything you could ever need that you may have forgotten.
they also have this pet exercise area. It's not just a place like a big dog park where you throw your dog in and you have to supervise it. They have individual kennels. So if you're willing to, you can leave your dog here and you can do all your shopping, come back and get them. It's in a nice, fairly shaded area. So your pooch should be okay. It's actually a really nice idea because Pancake Bay is pretty good distance from anywhere. So although it is only a kilometer from the actual park, you can come here, bring your dog instead of leaving them on the site or in a trailer or if you're tenting it works out even perfect because you can throw your pooch in there, do all your shopping, you know they're safe and sound. The store in the park is pretty basic. You can only really get a barbecue lighter, maybe some tent pegs, t-shirts, bumper stickers of course. We're on the lookout trail, it's six kilometers roughly three hours round trip and we're gonna go check it out we're doing the cheater so it's the shortest version of this uh, trail but we're gonna show you the cool things we see Get out of there. We go that way. Hopefully, everyone can see it, but it will take us a long way around. Or we can go this way. That's the way we want to go. No, 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 no! no. no. Oh. oh, God. Bruno. What is wrong with you, dog? Still climbing. Holy stairs, Batman. My GoPro does not do this justice. It is so beautiful up here, I cannot believe it. But I just cannot get the footage that I want out of this itty bitty camera. So, 
I highly recommend you guys come up here and check this out because it is definitely worth it. Alright, let's talk about Pancake Bay for a minute. Now if you open up the GPS, you're going to have to flip it over to the northern Ontario part. Pancake Bay is located right here on Highway 17. It's in between Sault Ste. Marie and Wawa, Ontario. Now let's just get to the southern side of things. Why don't we start with Toronto? If you're coming from Toronto, you're gonna have to come all the way up and around. And that is 760 kilometers or eight and a half hours for you guys. Now London, Ontario over here, you have two options. One is you go through the States up and around. And if you do that, it's 750. 45 kilometers roughly and seven and a half hours now if you choose to stay in Canada and you take rough something like that up through it is going to be 920 kilometers or nine hours 40 minutes roughly if you're coming from Ottawa it's gonna take you nine and a half hours and it is 860 kilometers ish for you to make the trek back to the northern Ontario side if you're coming from Sudbury it's gonna take you along something like that it's going to be 380 kilometers or 4 hours 20 minutes Sault Ste. Marie you guys got it off lucky it's only 77 kilometers or one hour and if you're coming from the north from Wawa you're looking at 150 kilometers or an hour and 40 minutes now from Thunder Bay to come around and down to Pancake Bay you're looking at 630 kilometers roughly and about six and a half hour drive now we've been here uh five days now and what i'd like to say is this drive anywhere through here is just absolutely beautiful i cannot stress that enough as you can see with pancake bay the gatehouse is at the southern end and as you're coming through there are five different campgrounds now you have the hilltop up here which is located off of this map down at the northern end now in the hilltop there is 90 sites and this is all radio free we went up here to have a peek around just took a little drive and this is all shaded areas all the sites are nice and big and they are beautiful but if you're relying on solar panel for your hydro to charge your batteries this might not be the campground for you. Now, you have the west campground, the central, the west central, the east central, and the east. So as it goes, you got your west, your west central, your east central, and then your east. Now, your west campground has 76 sites mixed hydro and not hydro then you have your west central which is the same mixed hydro of 71 sites east central you'll have uh, only 40 sites which is um, also mixed and then your east is 58 sites and it is uh, mixed as well with hydro and non hydro along the beach these are considered to be uh, premium sites and we are right now located at site 477 and I can tell you that this little river here 
you, you do not have beach access, but there are little bridges that come across. When you get down here, past this river, the, the water side, the beach side, you have complete beach access to get. You just walk right off your site and onto the beach. These are lovely sites. Also, five yurts. They sleep six people total. They come with a mini fridge, table and chairs, barbecue and a broom and a dustpan. You are required to bring everything you need to cook on and eat with, as well as your clothing and bedding. There are five group sites down here. And there is also a rustic cabin as well down here. The group sites are all different sizes and they all host 15 to 40 people. The rustic cabin here sleeps five. It's a one queen bed, a single over a double bunk bed. It has a mini fridge and microwave, a barbecue and chairs uh, inside and outside table. Now you are also required to bring anything you need to cook with, anything you need to eat with, and all of your bedding and clothes as well, similar to a yurt. There's a two day minimum with this uh, cabin. Now you're gonna wanna go ahead and contact the park for more information on this. I was going to film it, but it was, uh, it was currently rented out to a family and unfortunately, I don't want to be that guy who's filming it while the people are there. So, what I can tell you is that this rustic cabin is not very rustic. It's all brand new looking. It's got a brand new barbecue, brand new tables and chairs outside, brand new windows. It looks like it was built last summer. At the northern end of the park, in the hilltop campground area, there is a trail that heads through that, around that, should I say. Now, this trail is 3.5 kilometers long. It's an easy trail, and it should take you anywhere in between one to two hours. Apparently, there's some boardwalks and some excellent scenery of Lake Superior. Across the road and down a little bit is this trail, the Lookout Trail. It's 14 kilometers long it's a moderate and it could take you anywhere in between five to seven hours to do this trail now we did not do the whole trail we came in we went up to the lookout and then we came back out so there is that option that option is anywhere from two to three hours long there's a lot of steps here so if you're not up for those steps I suggest you uh, might want to skip it but all I can tell you about this trail is if you go to the lookout you can see the final resting place of the Edmund Fitzgerald that sank in 1975 out in Lake Superior this lookout is one by far one of the best I've seen all summer long and it is totally worth it to get up there if you can. There's a couple of um, decks and you can see all of the shoreline and it is so beautiful. It is definitely worth it. The wife and I, we packed a lunch and ate sandwiches up there and had a nice little afternoon of it. It was totally worth it. I highly recommend it. There's also four barrier-free, wheelchair-accessible campsites here at Pancake Bay for everyone who needs it. Just 15 minutes south of Pancake Bay is the Chippewa Falls. Now this is the halfway point of the Trans-Canada Highway. It's actually really cool to check out, stop in, and uh, let your pup walk around if you have one. And let's go look at these falls. I'm dying to check it out.
with some basic rock climbing skills, you can get right to the very back or the top of the falls there. And it's definitely worth it. It's so cool. Uh, the, there is a path going back, but you kind of got to make your own at some points if you want to get to the very top to the best views. I did it and I'm out of shape. So yeah, you can do it too if you're in moderate shape. North of Pancake Bay is a lookout just off Highway 17. We were just out on a drive and I gotta share this. This is too cool. Along the beach side of Pancake Bay, there are little paths that lead to the beach just in case you don't have beach access from your site. They're not too far apart so it's nice and easy to get to and all you got to do is cross this little bridge. The one issue that I'm having throughout this whole trip out here at Pancake Bay is my little GoPro just does not do any of the scenery any justice at all. But since I'm here, I have to talk about this beach. It's over three kilometers long. So there's plenty of sun and sand to be had by all. And it's beautiful. There is a dog beach and it's down at the far end from the gate entrance. It's a, this park is a nice long, narrow park and dog beach is at the very far end of it. But it's the same as every other part of this beach. So it's beautiful sands, beautiful, beautiful views, and it's off leash. So it doesn't matter if you're, as long as your pooch behaves, like you gotta have some common sense about it, but it's worth it. I love this beach. We were here all day and I forgot my GoPro at home. So here I am on the cloudiest day we've had since we've been up here filming this beautiful beach and I'm not doing it any justice. You got to come up here. You got to check it out. It is so worth the drive. It's a little bit of a drive for Southern Ontario where we're from. That's for sure. But it's definitely worth it. All right. It's time for Pancake Bay bumper sticker. It's our tradition. And we drove a long way to get this bumper sticker. I am actually really happy to put this one on because we've wanted to go there for a very, very long time. Uh-oh. Oh, that was close, eh? <laughs> there we go. Yeah, that was a lot of years in the making just to get this bumper sticker. I'm really happy right now. Boom. Nice. All right, well, if you're subscribed to the channel, you know it's time for pros and cons. What do you think, baby? I had a wonderful time. Yeah, me too. I'm beat. I'm wiped. I'm pooped. So is Bruno. He's, oh, he's actually awake, but he's just Hi, lying there. I have so many pros, I couldn't list them all. I've said a thousand times probably in this video, the scenery, but that beach was definitely a pro oh, absolutely beautiful and i like went on forever yeah um i loved how dog beach was a part of it so you had your campers then you had dog beach and then you had the group camping mm -hmm. dog beach wasn't very big but it was the same as every other section of the beach so it was beautiful yes oh. bruno enjoyed it oh you thoroughly enjoyed it my only con well maybe two i think i have the biggest one was because it's long and narrow it's right by that 17 the highway and it wasn't that bad though like it didn't keep me up at night um you get the odd big truck going like a transport truck going by not those you could hear coming a mile away <laughs> yeah but other than that um because it's so far north, as soon as it started getting dark, the traffic would die right off. 
like your cars and your normal traffic would die right off and yeah it was quiet plus you could just hear the waves anyway that would put you to sleep yes we were site 477 um so it's right on the water side and at night every night the waves hitting the beach would send you to sleep like a baby i slept so good up there oh it was unreal the fresh air and all the fun head hit the pillow snore city <laughs> yes i don't snore though i've never heard myself snore ever except for when i wake myself up from snoring <laughs> yeah <laughs> what was your other con oh my other con um the comfort stations were pretty far apart that was about it the vault toilets are just uh, straight up outhouse style hole in the ground you poop in but that the vault toilets you can't expect much out of but um, it was a bit of a walk not really for us but for some people it would be a very long walk for to a comfort station to grab a shower do laundry whatever right the only other con I can think of and it has nothing to do with the park absolutely nothing is um, if you're coming from southern Ontario it's a long way regardless of what way you take it's it's a long way um, we would like to have taken the Chichi Mun but uh, there's pros and cons to that I'm not even gonna get into it but um, it's what nine hours from our house it took us 12 just to get up there 10 hours driving plus we did a hour layover in Sudbury yeah and pee breaks lunch dinner with any young kids it would be uh, it would be a trek but it is definitely worth it for the views and that beach and all the cool things to do Chippewa Falls in Lake Superior Park there's the pictographs now unfortunately yes. we couldn't go because it was too hot to leave Bruno in our trailer with it zipped up in our tent trailer I'm not about to do that to my dog because no. uh, it's an hour drive each way and then about at least an hour an hour two maybe to go see them um, but I hear they're well worth it and if you're going that far What's a day trip if you're on your week's vacation to go see those pictographs? I wish I could have done that, but like I said, we got the pooch and we gotta be mindful of his health. It's all your fault, Bruno. <laughs> hey, buddy. Hi. <laughs> Another 300 kilometers, baby. Yay. <laughs> uh, all in all, Pancake Bay was awesome. Definitely highly recommend going there and uh, that'll both do it for this video. So if you do know something about Pancake Bay that we didn't mention, uh, throw a comment below so everyone else knows. Um, like, share, subscribe, yada, yada, yada. My vacation days don't carry over so I intend to use them. I think you should too. All right, see you on the next video. What is up campers? We're out here, Pancake Bay. Gonna do that again, cause it's over here. I bring lunch, animal, and good luck. I'm out at the group camp, I'm out at the group campground. Site. Gonna wanna drive to this one. Is the, no. Shut up. Hold this while I go. <laughs> Wheelchair accessible ramps. Not ramps. This stupid bridge. <laughs> this is what the third time this summer that we've sat in this traffic for this bridge. Ah, uh, third. Grundy, Rastool. Rastool. No. Well, yeah. yeah. Rastool. Grundy, Rastool, and, and now, now Pinky Bay. Bay.
So it'll be the last time this summer we sit at this bridge. Yeah. <laughs> Next trip's Algonquin, so we're going up the 11 instead of the 400. That'll be a nice change of scenery. Yeah. <laughs> We've been riding this highway up and down. We know our rest stops. Our Tim's breaks. That's true. 